Welcome to the fall leaf tutorial. Oh, I'm so excited for this time of year. Don't you just love seeing all the different colors of leaves around? So we're going to start with a number six brush here and we're just going to use our ultramarine blue, put it on our palette there. And then as you can see, I'm adding a lot of water to it. We want it to be really light. It's going to just kind of have a cloudy sky effect behind the leaves. So you're going to add a lot of water. The ultramarine blue is really, the pigment is really strong in this set, which is really fun. But for these light and airy type of things, you just want to use a lot of water. So I'm just adding paint and water and going around all of the outlines of the leaves. Remember that with watercolor, it always dries a little bit darker than it looks while you're painting. So don't be afraid to do it, um, to do a nice light wash here. I'm just going around all of the lines. Don't worry too much if you get a little bit um, of the blue inside of your leaf lines. That will just make it look even more um, interesting and we'll give it a nice watercolor effect, which is what we're doing. So that works. Okay. And as you can see, I'm just adding a little bit more blue on there. Um, just bringing it to the edges. And just making sure I've got it all outlined. I'm sorry, all uh, colored in on the outlines so that those leaves, when we color them, they'll just pop with that blue behind them. As you can see, I'm adding a little bit more blue in some areas and less than others to just give it a nice cloudy effect. Okay, now I'm going to look at my reference picture here and I'm going to start with the oak leaf. I am mixing some burnt sienna. That's the color I'm using there. It's the lighter brown. And I'm mixing it with a little bit of crimson red and a little bit of the alizarian red. Give it a nice reddish brown color. Just kind of mix it to what you think would look good. This is our oak leaf. So I'm just going to block it in using my number six brush. I'm going to use the tip of my brush on those um, outside edges of the leaves and then just use the belly of my brush to get the main color there in the middle. And right now I'm not worried too much about um, you know, making the color even or anything like that. We're just blocking it in. We want the color to vary a little bit, so um, I'm not worrying too much about making sure it's all even. Just kind of moving the paint around, making sure I'm getting all my edges with the tip of that brush. Okay. We're going to move over to the elm leaf and I'm just going right in there with a coating of the crimson red. And as you can see, the edges of that leaf are, uh, they have lots of little points on them. 
So I'm just using the very tip of my brush to get those in and then adding some water so that the color will vary inside of that leaf. We want that color to not be um, all one color. We want it to vary. Just do my little stem and getting those little details on that leaf. Okay, we're going to move on to add some Alizarian Crimson, sorry, Alizarian Red, and I'm doing what's called the Wet on Wet technique on that one, and I'm going back to the oak leaf and doing it there too. So basically just adding color to what's already wet and just moving it around a little bit, but mostly just letting the water do its magic. I'll just add a little more detail there to the stems. And this is really fun. The wet on wet technique is really fun to do. It's even more fun to watch it dry because it makes all kinds of really cool patterns. Okay. And I just am coming in with a little bit of that Alizarian red and moving it around just a bit in here. Okay, so now I'm going to prepare my palette for the ash leaf that's underneath that oak leaf. So I'm just getting some crimson red and alizarian red and mixing those together to make a really bright beautiful red and i'm just using the tip of my number six brush if you want you can change to your number two brush if that's more comfortable for you i'm just using the tip to outline those little leaves. I'm going to start with the middle of those leaves and just bring them there to the base. I'm just doing it very carefully, just following those lines. Now I'm just going to outline my leaves as I go. So you can choose to just do the middle lines, or if you want, you can just outline everything and just go back to those other ones. This takes a little bit of control. Don't worry too much if you don't stay exactly with the lines that's the beautiful thing about leaves they're all different so if they're not exactly the same that's okay okay then i'm going to add a little bit of water and a little bit more pigment over here on the side and I'm just going to color in, block in with my paint. Some more of that red. It's hard to see on this video, but it is a little bit lighter. So as it dries, those lines will come through. Okay, so now I'm just washing out my brush and I'm going right for the cadmium yellow, which has a little bit of green in it from another project, probably. 
So I'm just cleaning that out by adding some more water and just mixing it. I don't mind too much if it has a little bit of that green in it. And really the yellow will outweigh the green on this one. So I'm just going to go in. This is my horse chestnut leaf. And I'm going to give it a nice, thick, bold um, yellow wash. It's got a lot of pigment on it. But then I'm just going to let my pigment vary by not adding a whole bunch more of that yellow. I'm just adding water now with a little bit of yellow at this point so that it can vary as well in color. As you can see, this leaf is a lot lighter than the first leaf that I did because I want it to vary. Okay, so now I'm just going to add some yellow to some of these smaller leaves that are floating. Remember, you don't have to do the exact colors I'm doing. You can be creative and do whatever colors you want to. And then I'm going in with a sap green and I'm going to fill in those other little leaves there. And now I want to go back to that oak leaf. I'm adding some more of that brown and red mixture that I did before. And I just want to add a little bit more to that. It's dry at this point, and so I'm doing a layering um, technique where once it's dry you can just layer it. And that just gives it an, an extra depth of color. And now I'm going to go back to my other leaf here and I'm just adding with the mixture that I made before of the alizarian crimson, I'm sorry, the alizarian red and the crimson and I'm just going to outline those little lines that I have. And now I'm coming in with my sap green and just in the middle of that horse chestnut leaf I'm going to add a little bit of green. And then I'm adding another layer here of that green to just give those leaves a little more color and depth and a little bit of green into those yellow ones as well. Okay and now this part is totally optional if you want to outline your leaves with um, a black sharpie. I, I like the no bleed sharpies and I love to outline mine. I feel like it just brings out the colors but that is my style. So if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Um, if you do decide to do it, just make sure that your painting is all the way dry before you do it. Um, ask me how I know. <laughs> it is very hard to outline wet paint with a Sharpie marker. So, okay. And once that is done, you will have some beautiful leaf art to hang up on your wall or share with a friend. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. Have a great day.